Hi everyone, so I'm uh, still Olivier, uh, lead dev of the Pando team, a project funded by the uh, Aragon Nest program. So uh, what we are working on is a distributed VCS, like a decentralized alternative to Git, right? So I'm going to try to explain you what we've been working on the last couple of months and what we intend to work on the next couple of months. Um, no, still a tech issue. Ah. So how works Pando if you take like the uh, architectural level? Well, in, in the end, it's pretty simple. Uh, each time you want to publish a new version of your code base, like uh, create a commit, basically, then all your code base is like snapshotted, uh, pushed to an IPFS node, pinned to make it like publicly accessible. Then we create uh, a bunch of IPLD uh, data sets, like to describe the commit, who has created the commit, what is the message related to the commit, what are the parents commit to preserve the history tree. And then we take the root hash of this data set and just send it to a custom Aragon app, saying, OK, that's the new head of the repo I'd like to submit to you. Do whatever you want with it, merge it, reject it, stuff like that. So um, the overall architecture is pretty simple. And actually, the hard part was that we have been rewriting a whole VCS from scratch. So um, often, people ask, why are you doing that, right? I, I mean, we have Git. Git works well. Git is already decentralized. So there are a couple of uh, reasons why we decided not to use Git and uh, go with our own thing. Uh, some of them are like uh, kind of technical uh, issues. Uh, for instance, let's say uh, you don't want to store your commit on chain because it's way too expensive uh, regard with respect to gas costs, but you may want to make sure that when someone push a new commit, it's not going to break your whole history tree, right? So you would like to make sure that this commit, even though it's not stored on chain, you just store is, its hash, contains the right information not to break the history tree. So you have to make sure that this piece of data is contained into the data set uh, of which you only have the hash. And it's quite of tricky to make that with Git because of the hash algorithm used by Git, stuff like that. And this is something we can do with Pondo because we have been building our own IPLD resolver. So the way we serialize data, the uh, hashing algorithm we use had a way to check that this whole history tree, even though it's not stored on chain, is going to be consistent because we can check for the hash of this data. But there are more, uh, let's say, important or deep reasons why we don't rely on Git. Because we think that Git is not Web3 compatible in the end. Okay? And that kind of uh, feel weird because everyone is saying, OK, Git is uh, already decentralized, so why not? Uh, this is true, but uh, in the same time, uh, when we talk about decentralization, it can mean a lot of differencing. And we can take inspiration from this uh, article from Vitalik about what decentralization is and try to uh, say, OK, th there's at least three different things in decentralization. One is architect architectural decentralization, like technical decentralization. The other one is political decentralization. And the last one is logical decentralization. So when it comes to architectural decentralization, uh, people always say that Git is decentralized. And that's partially true because actually you can take any kind of Git repo, clone it locally, and then you can spawn your own server to like offer it to the world. So um, obviously, with Pando, we are trying to push things a little further by replicating the data on the uh, IPFS distributed file system, uh, the logic on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, the idea being to avoid the kind of infrastructure shutdown we are used to when uh, GitHub goes down and then everyone gets unemployed for the day. But the most uh, interesting part is about the political decentralization, right? Who has rights over the code? Uh, and this is where things get really tricky with Git, because Git has been built with this idea of the push rights, okay, which has given birth to this idea of maintainers, whose task is really hard. Um, and so basically, you have this small gr group of people who have push rights over a repo, and the other one who don't. Uh, and even that feature, like the pull request feature, which has been introduced by GitHub and all uh, other well-known uh, Git platforms, is not even a part of the native Git protocol. Uh, actually, it is. You can create pull requests, but then you have to send it by mails to probably the new store valve or something like that. So it's not really uh, hyper convenient. So with Pando, we have uh, decided to take the other way around. Um, we still have something like push rights of a, a repo, but these rights are handled by uh, the Aragon OS ACL uh, feature. So basically, you can grant these push rights to a wallet address. So it, it's going to become a maintainer, right? But it becomes really interesting when you grant this uh, push 
rights to a voting application. And obviously, that's what makes a Pando uh, interesting, uh, I guess. So uh, what we have been working on right now is like a, symbol, a simple govern governance scheme, but anyone can develop its own govern governance scheme on top of Pando. And this uh, governance scheme is basically uh, a voting scheme where uh, the way it works is like, okay, when you, when you want to push and you commit, it just kind of open a pull request automatically. Uh, and then all the token holders of the DAO are invited to come and vote on your pull request to decide whether or not they want to merge that pull request, whether they want to reject it. But they are also invited to quantify the value of this pull request uh, because it's not the same whether it's like a uh, minor uh, you know, typo fix in the readme or it's like a pull request uh, like pushing a brand new feature into your code base. So people are invited to quantify the value of this uh, pull request, as subjective as it may be, and then we have a weighted average mechanism which is going to grant uh, a given value to this pull request. And in the end, if this pull request is eventually merged, then uh, the guy who created the commit is going to be rewarded with a given amount of what we call native lineage token, which is going to acknowledge the fact that he has been a contributor to that uh, repo. And this NLT token are going to help him to uh, gain uh, an authority over the repo, like an authorship share over the repo. So the next time someone push a pull request, well, thanks to this contribution, you're going to be able to vote on the pull request to decide whether or not you want to accept it, what's the value, what's the importance of that pull request. We think it's important because it allows us to decentralize the governance of such code-based repo, but it's also important for the sustainability of open source because it means that every contributor to the repo is tracked, and then if this repo gains an income at some point, then it's going to be able to be split amongst all the token holders, which means all the people who have actually contributed to that code base. The last point is about logical centralization, and uh, actually, uh, Git is pretty decentralized about that because when you have multiple clones of the same repo, no one of them has more authority than the other about what is the real uh, version of this code base, right? There is no central point of authority. Uh, actually, that's not quite all blockchain work and how Pondo work because the whole point about blockchain is to have a super decentralized system to, in the end, have a single source of trust, a single source of authority. Uh, and so that's how Pondo work. Uh, obviously, the remote repo, the on-chain repo, have more authority than the local one you clone in your local repository. And that's important to us because it tells us to enforce the logical integrities of the contrib contribution and dependency tracking process. Uh, basically, Pondo is not just a versioning tracking system. It's also uh, it's meant to be a lineage tracking system, which means every contributor, every software dependencies, but maybe also the fork your repo comes from are supposed to be tracked so that, uh, one more time, it's all about open source sustainability because it's the idea is to say, okay, guys, uh, I'm building this uh, open source library. I don't have to figure out like an economic model because if lots of people use my library, well, at some point there will be a project with a given economic model and maybe it's going to get like an earning on the blockchain and then this earning is going to be split and it will flow up all the way up to the uh, dependency tree or to the lineage tree. So the idea is to be able to share this income with all your contribution and with all your dependencies. Okay, it's demo time, so uh, I had planned to make a real-life demo and then I realized that you wouldn't be able to see anything on the screen, so I just took a picture, uh, a video, and kind of zoom. So that's the CLI of uh, Pando. Uh, the last version is not published on MPN yet, but you will be able to download it like next week, otherwise you can just clone the repo locally and uh, play with it. So that when's, that's when a month of work just looked like <laughs> someone using Git on the screen. It's not super interesting, but uh, basically it's like uh, Git, though you have kind of a different workflow. Uh, for instance, you have this uh, fibers mechanism, which are kind of like Git branches, except that these fibers are totally independent. So you always have this problem when you uh, work with Git and you want to switch from one branch to another, where you have to commit your changes even though you don't want or you have to stash them, and it's kind of a mess. In Pondo, all the fibers are totally independent, so you can easily switch from one to another without uh, like being uh, scared about these kind of uh, conflicts. Uh, the other one is the tracking system. Uh, basically, in Git, you have to explicitly tell when you want to add a file into a commit. Uh, in Pando, you can just track a file, and then all the modifications are going to be taken into account for all the upcoming commits. Uh, uh, 
if you say that you don't want to, of course it won't happen. So we've taken a lot of inspiration from GitLess about that, which uh, is some kind of a novel layer of, of a Git which has thought a lot about Git design flows. Um, you can also like automatically deploy Aragon DAO from the CLI. Uh, so basically what it does is like it go and fetch a specific DAO kit, uh, which is an, Ar an Aragon package manager uh, package, and it automatically install all the related Pondo apps, set the permission and all. So that's the CLI, and uh, the magic happens when you just uh, like try to commit, so you give the name of your DAO, uh, let's say Aragon Black, that's like the name of your uh, GitHub organization, except it's not on GitHub, it's like uh, an Aragon DAO, then the name of your repo, uh, and then we have been building uh, this uh, front end for uh, the Aragon client, still kind of minimalistic, but we are still working on it. So you have this RFI, RFI are the equivalent of pull request. We have built buildings that uh, IPFS browsing components that you can browse your uh, code base. We have basic syntax and lightning, still trying to polish that, and then we are going to try to push that to the Aragon UI package so that everyone can leverage on it. Um, and then you have this uh, little interface which allows you to quantify the value of your pull request. So let's say, okay, that guy did a good job, did a good job, let's grant him like two NLT token, which will acknowledge the value of this contribution to my code base. Uh, so here it is, it's done now. And then you can say, okay, now if that pull request is merged, then the guy is going to be rewarded with that uh, two token. And it's important to mention that these tokens are not meant to be transferable, they are not currency tokens, they are just meant to acknowledge your contribution to the repo. Even though we have a hook which allows the DAOs to say, okay, automatically when someone uh, gets granted an LT token thanks to his contribution, we can also reward him with like project-wide tokens such as NT or things like that. So. Uh, like right now, the pull request is merged, and that's it. You've been rewarded, and it's going to keep track of this contribution in the whole uh, history of the project. So what's next? Well, a lot, <laughs> obviously. Um, <coughs> one other thing we're still working on is to build this semantic lineage tree, which is about, okay, how do we describe the relationship between all these contributions, the forks, the dependencies, and maybe we can provide some semantic reach descriptive language to say, ah, uh, that person has been contributed as a developer, that one has contributed as a designer, that one has contributed as a maintainer, stuff like that. Also, we are gonna, we want to work with that planning suit application, which has been demoed yesterday, which is uh, totally awesome, so obviously we want to have some integration between that planning suit and Pando. Uh, add some uh, like database or distributed database component to allow uh, for people to open in a decentralized way issues and track these issues. Uh, work further on the Aragon PM uh, integration. That's also one of the reasons why we published a blog article like two days ago to announce that we are uh, running for Flock, so we are gonna uh, push a proposal to become uh, an Aragon team under the name of Aragon Black. Uh, the idea being to keep on developing Pondo and integrating all of the things we've learned by developing Pondo more tightly into the Aragon stack, help decentralize Aragon development too, and make it like the go-to choice when it comes to uh, like decentralized and open source projects. Um, so come and read the article, come and uh, uh, use the CLI and the all the Aragon apps. The Aragon apps are going to be published on Ringkeby soon so that you can play with them. Uh, and yes, give us as much feedback as you can, guys, because in the end we are building this for you to play with it and to use it. So give us as much feedback as you can. We will be super happy. Thanks a lot.